Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to Nanalee's at Dawn. This is Shadow Fury 333 with another Clan Wars. And today it's going to be a brand new clan, Recursion, which currently only has Google Frog, Acronym, and Parzival in it. And they're going to be up against GBC, who have been basically playing every single match so far. GBC over in the western side of the map, with represented by Fred and Hokomoko. Hokomoko, of course, going for Amphib. Fred going for Cloaky Bots. This is Valus Mananatus, which is a map that definitely favors bots more than it looks, just due to the fact that the area is quite hilly. Vehicles can sort of navigate around the center, but otherwise it's not great. Google Frog going for Cloaky, and Aquanum also going for Cloaky. So this is, like I said, bot-focused map, and the players do know it. So at this point, it looks like GBC is being less aggressive, which is interesting. I mean, we saw last week GBC versus Mean, how basically GBC was being super aggressive the entire time. This time around, however, it looks like they are actually being considerably more defensive, at least in this map. I mean, Fred going off for the attack, but Aquanim and Google Frog are considerably just more... They're more unified in their offense. Okamoko is not being offensive. In fact, their main base isn't even well protected at this point. They have one Lotus, and that's about it. So are Google Frog and Aquanim going to be trying to deal with this? Are they going to be trying to just deal with that directly? Also, you may notice that this is currently 2v2. That's that's because there was a bit of a weird organization snafu, and now it's sort of... It was kind of a bit of a last-minute thing. I don't know why... Yeah, anyway, the point is... So yeah, don't worry about 2v2. It is still Clan Wars. That doesn't make it any less Clan Wars. It just means there aren't that many reps. I mean, I did mention before, I would rather... Oh, well, skip the game. So... Actually, not much to say. I mean, Aquanim and Google Frog have scouted what they wanted to scout, lost their units at the same time. So at this point, Fred and Duck, not Duck, and Hokomoko, Fred and Duck player over there, yeah, Hokomoko, are they going to be going for something a bit more counterattack? Yes, they they appear to be doing so. Or at least Hokomoko wants to counterattack. But yeah, as I was saying, I mean, I personally would have been okay with having this weird, like a 1v1, 2v2 mix, or just 1v1s all around. I'm good with 3v3 too, but this is fine for me. So if you guys... Well, okay, I don't really care what you guys think at this point because I'm not even the one organizing Clan Wars. I mean, if you guys like it, that's great, but Hokomoko is the one in charge. So, talk to them. Anyway, I think 3v3 is okay. And it's just that there was, like I said, not today. But 2v2 should be fine too. Google Frog going back to counterattack. Should be able to get rid of this one duck. That shouldn't be a problem. But Hokomoko and Hokomoko and Fred both, they're getting a good position. Nakunim and Gufa, they look rather pushed back. Like, Fred has a bit of a forward front line. Akunim's trying to set that up as well, but that's a lot of force projection. That could easily jump forward and deal with anything in the center. So Fred and Hokomoko being quite aggressive to start out. But Hokomoko getting punished for that, at least partially. Losing one duck, losing, I think they lose two ducks. Now, bear in mind, ducks are about as expensive as glaives. They're a touch more expensive, so it's actually worth it... Right, to kill one glaive isn't a huge loss. However, that is a loss of position. That's the bigger problem. At this point, Hokomoko has been pushed very far back. And they're still building stuff up. They do have... Yeah, they got ducks along with their workers. It's not just ducks. It's not just workers. But they do have not the best position. Google Frog managing to eke a little bit more room. So that we can set up, well, a couple more metal extractors. And then from there, just get their economy more stabilized. Because at this point, GBC is considerably... Not like considerably, but they do have a bit more arc economy. Like, team economy is up by 5. So it's not bad. If they can keep that advantage up, that's going to be quite powerful. They do have the Northeast. They don't have... They don't have their Southwest yet, or Southeast yet. But on the GBC side, they have everything. Sorry, the Recursion side, I should say. Recursion is... Recursion's doing okay for economy. GBC should be pulling ahead pretty soon. It looks like... Is Recursion doing... Oh, Recursion's got a lot of forward expansions, that's why. These metal extractors are making something of a difference, which I find a bit surprising, actually. Well, 17 metal extractors, so I guess that does make sense compared to... No, that's 18. Never mind, they're... They should be basically neck and neck, so I'm... I don't see any reclaim around here. This is strange. Well, at any rate, North and South getting 
Kind of mixed up in this Hogamoko, trying to take out the south, assuming it's going to be, and correctly spotting that worker, but not able to kill it in time due to the reload time. Google Frog able to push Hokomoko away, but the Hokomoko is well aware that the south is being expanded to now. While Fred, on the other hand, Fred is in a position to just push in very strongly. Akuna's forces are somewhat out of position right now. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Now... Google Frog is... Well, Google Frog is carrying a lot to the south side. Okamoko can't get any room in. Like, they can't get a, a duck in edgewise. Just for what Google Frog is doing. At this point, every duck that's died has been in Google Frog's territory, too. That's all free reclaim. I haven't taken advantage of it yet, but yeah, there's 300 metal worth of reclaim in this area alone. And that is fully inside of Google Frog's base. Google Frog's set up. Aquanim is also pretty well set up. They are, how well defended are they? They have no defenses whatsoever, so Aquanim is quite open. I don't think Fred knows this, but I, but I'm sure Google Frog is a little bit worried about that. Now taking the center, Google Frog very strongly getting in. So recursion, despite the early opening, well, not quite opening aggression by GBC, but definitely opening counterattack by GBC and territory control. Recursion is restabilizing into the center, taking that out as quickly as possible. This is going quite well for Recursion. They're getting the center. Taking that center and making it theirs. Can GBC pull back from this? It looks like they probably can. I mean, they have plenty of units right now. That was a silly question to ask myself. Because they have tons... They still have a lot of units. I mean, the armies are pretty even. Recursion does have a much stronger economy, though. Their team income is up by 10. Individual income up by about 5 compared to GBC. Which means they are going to have a much easier time just generally... Getting themselves bigger and bigger and bigger. And Akram going for gunships while Fred goes for a Black Dawn. I have not seen a Black Dawn in a very long time. Hmm, are there enough crowds for that? I guess the Glaives do work as a crowd for that. Black Dawns are great for crowd control, very inaccurate, but have a pretty powerful weapon. Might be useful for these Lotuses. Would be kind of useful for the Glaives. But I'm not sure if the Glaives are too fast. It's the one problem. And Fred just spamming those claims. Hokomoko. Should we should go over to Skirmisher game? I guess they're expecting to have some... Oh, well, I mean, they want to get rid of the Lotuses. That's one thing. I was going to say, expecting riots. Yeah, that, that expectation is actually pretty valid. As Warriors stream in from Google Frog. Is Google Frog only building Warriors right now? No, they built some Warriors. Now they're back to Glaives. However, that is going to be the north side, which is in trouble. South side's okay. It looks like it's, is that a Stardust being built up there? That is indeed a Stardust. So right now is about the only timing that GBC has before that Stardust is up, and it's going to be that much harder to get in. But it looks like they're not going to take it. Now, granted, that Stardust doesn't have the biggest range. I mean, this north side is still pretty open. But it looks like once once Hokomoko gets their forces in, Fred and Hokomoko are going to have a unified attack coming in here, and that should get rid of pretty much everything. The Stardust is going to be a pain in the butt. That's always a problem. Google Frog Assault in the south. And Hokomoko and GBC Fred, are they going to go in there? Well, Hokomoko is. They seem to want to. Fred's a little reluctant. Fred's getting cold feet. Hokomoko is ready to go. Especially since they know that a lot of the forces for recursion are the south. Because at this point, I mean, despite the fact that they have the economic advantage, Google Frog and Aquadim actually have a smaller force. But I don't know what they're going to be doing at this point. And it looks like... Okay, Fred going... Wisely going north of the Stardust. Or... Were they? I guess they're trying to mix up Akinem. <laughs> they did go north. Now they're going south. What are they doing? Like, that's pretty clearly a mix-up. It seems... Because they know they can't go south. So the only thing I can think of is they're trying to just... They're trying to mess with Aquanum. And Google Frog coming in farther and farther, getting... Wow, a lot of forces just... I mean, two warriors. Two warriors can do a lot, especially when there's no defenses. But even with defenses, two warriors are pretty powerful. And the attack comes in from Akronim at the same time. Fred and Hokomoko were a little bit too late on their own attack. Down goes Fred's commander, and that will be a problem. Because, of course, it's economy. They could be... Oh, actually, no, the Black Dawn coming in to save the day. Fred's commander not being very... Well, okay, Fred is not... They don't value that commander that much. 
But still, the commander not being targeted, that is... That's not nothing. So, we should see a counterattack right now, and I... Oh, Black Dawn from Akinem as well. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Why are they going... I, I mean, one Black Dawn is kind of is kind of odd, but both sides going for Black Dawn? There's something that we don't know. But we do know that Google Frog is going in and tearing apart Hokomoko right now. Boy's doing a fine job, but the Glaives kind of counter them. And Warrior Drop's coming in. Unfortunately, boys are in place, so that's going to be rather ineffective. And the counterattack... Well, the gunship counterattack doing some damage. It looks like the Glaives and Hawk will be able to get rid of it. They had already prepared well enough. Google Frog managed to get their Air Force up in time. That Black Dawn should be dead. Fred is... I mean, Fred's out of the center. Hokomoko's totally out of the center. At this point, they got a pretty good defensive position. But right now, they don't. Right now, they've just lost pretty much everything they had in the air and are in a rather tight spot, all things considered. Or if it's not tight yet, it soon will be. Hokomoko does have a massive military advantage, though. They have definitely the strongest military. What do they have, other than... I guess just a bunch of boys. Yeah, 3,600 metal worth of boys. And the rest of it ducks, I suppose. Good job of the Tridents, though. That is... that. That's good to have, pushing everything back. So at this point, GBC is... Well, what do we have coming up here? Do you have any particularly good attacks coming here? Akinem getting the Gremlin, so no, Akinem's not going to be pushing anytime soon. Google Frog getting a bunch of glaives so they can. And they have been. They've been putting they've been applying a lot of pressure. But at this point, both Google Frog and Akram just want to stabilize, get into a really strong position, and then try to build up into something even better. Nice! Very nice Thunderbird attack. All the glaives are out. This north side is pretty much open. The defenders won't be enough to deal with it, and the glaives can't do anything. The gunship factory is down and. Fred's glaives are just getting torn to shreds before they're... I mean, this army's about to run out. That just ran out. But still, that army has been torn to shreds. Only like... I don't know how many units. There's like a dozen units left. Factories down. The north side is open. Google Frog's attack was very effective there. And that should probably take the game. Okamoku doesn't want to let that happen, but... I don't know what they're going to be able to do. I mean, these boys are strong, but still, that's not enough. Strider Hub coming in as well for... What are they going to build the Strider Hub? Dante's? Scorpions? Usually what you'd go for at this stage. Google Frog only has plus 40 income, so anything bigger than that would probably be a bad idea. And all the Spire Dusts. So many Spire Dusts everywhere. I think it's only been... Has it been only Recursion building those? I think so. Yeah, Akinem and Google Frog are the only ones building Spire Dusts right now. GBC has... Have they even built defenses? They built a few. Not many. Like that's, you know, a couple defenders, that's about it. No Spire Dusts for them. Huh. Okay, so we have a Hovercraft Switch. Okay, the Reaper, the Reaper Heavy Tank Assist is normal. Hovercraft, is that going to be a Penetrator Assist? Or is that going to be a Scalpel Assist? I can't imagine that'd be Daggers, that would be rather silly. But the only ones I can think of offhand are, yeah, Penetrator, maybe Mace. I guess a base assault force. That could make sense. And Dante coming in to finish things off. 15 minute Dante because we are playing on Valus Marineris, people. That's what happens when you play on this map. You get Dante's in before the 15 minute mark. And those ducks. So right now, I mean, I wasn't sure about recursion at first, but GBC has fallen behind. Taking a bit of damage, and that is... Now, one more counterattack. They got one more counterattack in them, I'm sure. Like, they're not going to throw in the towel. They're, they're going to go for a counterattack, and that's... Well, that's happening right now, at least from Hokomoko. Fred, what are they building? Well, just more glaives. More of the same. More glaives, more Zeus, more... Well, they didn't have Zeus before. Gremlins, because why not? There, okay, this is the cue for the counterattack. Come with the ducks, try to take out what they can. Ghoul Frog's commander up front. 
And it's... What does it have on it? It has a riot cannon. Ah, and the south side being broken. Completely broken by that Dante. So this duck line was just cut in half. Hokomoko losing a huge, um, huge, huge chunk of their army. Huge amount of their army is what I wanted to say before, but no. Huge chunk of their army is a better way of putting it. And that is basically it. I mean, at this point, the military advantage for recursion is very large. If a Thunderbird comes through here, that's going to be game. Like, right now, the Dante is tearing apart all the ducks. There's nothing to worry about. They, they're just dead. So Glaives can come in and tear everything apart afterwards. There are a lot of ducks, though. Wow, how many ducks? Okamoko must have had, like, 70 ducks. The Thunderbird coming in for the Glaive... Oh, wow, yeah, that, that Dante, they really want it gone. Of course, that is in fact not Hokomoku. Sorry, that's Hokomoku's Dante, and not Google Frog's Dante. Google Frog wants a gun, and they will not succeed. Or if they do, it'll be Hokomoku accidentally killing their own Dante more than anything else. Good shot, though. But Google Frog's Dante in a much better position. That's at least an advantage. At, like it needs to be repaired. It's out of position. This Dante can attack at will because even if it gets count, even if it gets hit by the other Dante, this Dante is less than half health. Less than half health, meaning the Google Frog's Dante can tear it to shreds, even if they engage. Like, if they engage right now, Google Frog wins. So what was the hovercraft? Yes, it is, in fact, a penetrator assist along with the hovercraft. Oh, actually, just about a switch, really. Banisher and Reaper pretty solidly being used. So, Aquanim... Nice four-factory setup right now. Very strong position of variety. Glaives, Penetrators, Rapers, Reapers, and Banishers. Covering all ranges and weight classes, so they are, they're basically set for anything they encounter. And Hokomoko haven't been pretty well broken, the Dante being the only thing that kind of is to their name. Now, this should be pushing the end. So that, that was kind of the counterattack. It didn't really go anywhere. Is it, the disarm just did too much, the Dantes did too much, that just, that just stopped it. That completely stopped it. The only problem here right now is the Google Glaives are in a bit of a box, and that's that's not good if splash damage is involved. And with ducks, splash damage is indeed involved. Nice tick. Oh well, not quite nice tick. Almost nice tick. Very nearly got it. And disarm on Hokomoko's Dante once again. Making darn sure the thing is disarmed for a good 20 sec- or oh, 15 seconds, rather. Making darn sure that thing is disarmed. It's 15's max, apparently. Yeah, I don't- I don't see any way GBC could get back from here. I mean, they have their Strider Hub, which is- that's not bad. Oh, are they going for- are they going for Ravens? Are they going for Wolverines? Hmm. The Ravens would- I mean, honestly, Phoenixes would probably be the best bet against all of these Glaives, just as crowd control. Because there are a lot of glaives on the recursion side. But otherwise, I don't know. I mean, glaives have a lot going for them, so, I mean, they might just go for the Phoenix. Why not? But on the other hand, Ravens or, like, Wyvern would make it a lot easier to get rid of the Dante. Ravens would just make it easier to get rid of a lot of economy, slow them down. It's a little late, you kind of have to get rid of their military as well. But still, that would help. Unless they're going for another Thunderbird. That could be the other option. No, they are going for Phoenix. Put my Thunderbird to try to stun out, but no, it is going to be Phoenix into Hawk. That's what's going on this time. But I don't know how effective it'll be. That Dante, between the Dantes and now the Grizzlies, there's a lot of concentrated firepower, heavyweight firepower. The Glaives, while useful, are no longer quite the powerhouse they were. Okay, this is. Yeah, the Glaives are no longer are quite as powerful as they were before, which means they are going to be... I mean, losing them is going to be a blow, but it's not going to be as big. I mean, they can try. We'll see what happens. Where are the Phoenixes? There are the Phoenixes. So the Phoenixes can do some damage. I mean, they can get rid of the Glaives. That's... that's something, but it's... I think it's too little too late. Ultimatum, however, coming in to get rid of the Dante and does exactly that! Being destroyed itself, the two Grizzlies are kind of making up for that. I mean, yeah, the Dante, good kill, but with the two Grizzlies in the back, and of course everything to the north as well. That's a win for Recursion. So that's the first game goes to Recursion.
Not sure what the second game is going to be played on, because this is going to be three games. It's not best of three, it's just three games. It's apparently how Clan Wars is played. So we're going to be having game two on GBC's choice of map. Here is what they're going to be going for. GBC seems to like maps like Red Comet, where you can just easily go tank and just push in. Like, quickly to Reaper. It's like flat maps, flat small maps like that. Red Comet, or... That's a really good map for them, too. Comet Catch is probably too big. I doubt they'd go for that. But I can see Red Comet. That seems like a likely one. So, is there... Well, I haven't decided. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a second game. So, yeah, GBC taking a... Taking it to the face. Taking a win to the... Well, punch to the face. We'll see. They're going to be able to pull back because... They... What are they going to choose? I, th I think Red Comet seems most likely. That's the one to me that seems like it's up their alley. Now, they have had other maps that they've been good with. It's not like it's just Red Comet. But they are, in fact, going to Red Comet. That, that's what they're doing. Because Red Comet is... Red Comet, like I said, is kind of their map. It's a map that they use a lot, so it's... It's a good map. Good map for them, at least. So, we do have... Uh, we could go for the 3v3 if we wanted to. I mean... There are enough players for it. At least GBC has enough players. Recursion would have to pull in someone from another clan, or just someone who's not affiliated. GBC has a good amount of players, though. So yeah, game two will be on red comment. So if, if it's anything like the last time, they're just going to go for tank vehicle rush. That's all it's going to be. Anyway, I'm... Not sure what's happening right now. But I just realized I forgot to set the delay. I'm really sorry, so I'm going to just do that right now. Give me a sec. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. It will be a bit of a delay for everyone who's watching. But yeah, we're back. Because I forgot to set tournament mode. Oh, and it looks like we are going to be getting 3v3 this time around. So now game two will be on a 3v3 setup. Well, Kane or El Torero, either of them could come in. Or not, I don't know. Okay, well, while they sort that out. Also, that Orpheus is going on about GBC. They're in GBC. And also, Orpheus is complaining about GBC. Like, GBC didn't win last game. Recursion won last game. They won pretty solidly, too, actually. Okay, never mind. Loke will not be a mercenary. Hmm. Oh well, I guess we're back to 2v2 then. Okay, so we are going to have a 3v3. Sprung is being the mercenary for re for Recursion, and Kane or El Torero, which one of them is going to come in? Okay, it looks like Kane's going to come in for GBC side. 
So we are in. We are into a 3v3 for game two. That sounds good to me. I like to see that. I really do. I mean, like I said, it's it took me a little while to get used to the idea, but now I'm like, okay, Clan Wars is a 3v3. I'm good with that. I'm kind of used to how 3v3 works as a casting setup. Okay, whatever, they sorted that out. <sighs> well, while they're sorting that out, I suppose it'd be interesting to see what people go for. Because right now it's Fred, Hulkamuckle, and Kane. And while GBC is kind of known for the whole tank play thing, I don't know any of these individual players to really go heavy on tanks. I mean, the tank stuff was happening last time, I believe, mostly... Who was it? That was a mean versus GBC match. And I recall the tank stuff happening more because of... It was like the Sponge and Ivory King that were pushing tanks a lot. But neither of them are playing right now. So I'm curious what'll happen, because I don't know... I don't know any of these players to really go heavy on tanks. I mean, Hokomoko is going to be going on. Okay, I guess we're doing 2v2. Never mind. Alright, so Ratchet 2v2. Anyway, as I was saying, neither Fred nor Hokomoko or Kane, if they were playing, but apparently no longer is going to be 3v3. Not sure what's happening. What? Like, I don't know. Anyway, I guess Sprung doesn't have Mumble. All right, so we're back to 2v2, and like I said, neither neither of the juicy players right now are ones I associate with tanks. Fred might, Hokomoko, I seriously doubt. But I don't expect to see big tank pushs. But maybe they do anyway. All right, shall we begin? We shall begin. Okay, awesome. The game is about to start. We are on to game two. So Fred and Hokomoko versus Akin and Goofrog on Red Comet. Which is, like I said, GBC's favorite map. So what are they going to plan to do today? I mean, everyone's on Mumble, by the way, so that's the thing about Clan Wars. Everybody's on Mumble, which means that it's going to be fairly fairly unlikely to see anything here. We aren't going to see a whole lot of team planning. We are going to see the results of the team planning, but not going to see the team planning itself. Fred going for light vehicles, so okay, there's that. I mean, that makes sense. Oh, come on, go. Are they going to go for light vehicles, or are they going to go for Amphib? I kind of hope they go for light vehicles, just because... I mean, this map could possibly work with Amphib, it's just... You kind of go for light vehicles or heavy tanks in this map, generally speaking. Or Hovercraft. Hovercraft works too, as Google Frog is doing. Yes, Hokomoko going for Hovercraft, so we are going to have interesting light vehicle Hovercraft mirror. That is mildly unusual. Mildly. Only mildly. Not, not that unusual. I mean, usually you just see light vehicle, light vehicle, or light vehicle, heavy tank. But, we do see light vehicle Hovercraft. It looks like Google Frog and Aquanim being... A bit more aggressive, Hokomoko is starting out with a scalpel. Not something you use if you're going to be on the offense. 
That's a strong defensive tool. I mean, you can use it, obviously, to deal with defenses and such, but this early in the game, a scalpel is basically meant to counter raiders. And it looks like that's exactly what it's going to be set up to do. Now, Aquan, on the other hand, they're pretty... I mean, the darts can see what's going on. I mean, they know, they know, it's, it's Life Vehicle versus Hovercraft. And... Excuse me. <laughs> Google Frog's going to find out the hard way, though, that... Oh, not quite. Nice dodge. Good dodge on that dagger. Didn't die... Apparently lived. But didn't die. That's the important thing. It did not die. It was a close call, but it's still alive. Now, Akron, on the other hand, got a good scout setup. Ooh, that dart's going to be very powerful. Scorch is going to take a little while to get in. Why did the dart go there? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. What does it have for vision? Okay, so it does know if this metal extractor is taken. It knows about any defensive lines that would be taken. Useful knowledge. Oh, do they know... Well, they know there's something that they had radar coverage. So they're going to check and they're going to take it out. Yeah, Hokumoko pinged it. Oh, what? No, they don't see it. Okay, now... Okay, there we go. I was like, wow. Almost got that. Almost allowed that thing to live. Very clever there, Akinem. Not quite... Not quite enough. It did get spotted, but still, that was very clever. If the radar had been up any later, it would have been invisible. But at this point, pretty even. I mean, it looks like... It looks like GBC really trying to stake out territory early on. I mean, they did that last game, too, and it didn't work out. Recursion was just fine taking the territory they could get, and then just slowly pulling in. Unfortunately, Recursion was forced to retreat into their own base. That's never a good position to be in. Google Frog should be able to get rid of these, though. Their own scalpels, very well used. But at this point, is Hokomoko just going scalpel? Yeah, Hokomoko is just going scalpel. They really like those homing missiles. Between ducks and scalpels, Hokomoko is a player who, if you give them homing missiles, they will be happy. And then they'll shoot them off and the homing missiles will explode and they'll be sad again because now they don't have any homing missiles anymore. But thankfully, scalpels and ducks have an infinite amount of homing missiles, so Hokomoko is never sad. And I want to cut the defenses too, so at this point, I guess they're... Are they going on the offense? Doesn't look like it. They just want to patrol around here. Make sure the south side is kind of open. Make sure it's still theirs. So we're going to see a diagonal split this time. Like, the south side's probably going to go to Hokomoko. North side's probably going to go to Aquinim. Although, if these scalpels do die, that's going to leave the south side very open. I mean, at this point, there are no daggers being built up yet. Hokomoko has been going entirely for scalpels. So if these scalpels die, these are expensive too. 220 metal each? Can't remember to think the 130 or so from daggers? Daggers are relatively cheap. Ooh, nice double kill there. But yeah, that's... This is going to be a bit tricky. Especially as the north is being taken... I mean, like I said, the north is already basically belonging to Recursion. Recursion has it. It's, it's theirs. GBZ, on the other hand, they basically have the south. Oh, Google Fox Commander. Okay, two more volleys like that and it's going to go down. That halberd doing a great job of slowing everything. Just keeping everything in a bad position. 85! Never mind. Daggers are actually only slightly more expensive than ducks. But these scalpels are about three times the cost, so that's... That's a huge risk when you throw them out there. Google Frog's commander. Oh, wow. Yeah, two more volleys would take it out from scalpels. That halberd wasting a lot of shots for everything. However, that halberd hasn't been used with anything. That's the one thing. That halberd was kind of on its own. Yeah, sure, it's wasting shots, but there's no ammo count. The units just regenerate their ammo. No big deal. The only problem is if it's being hit while other things are targets. If there are other relevant targets, then it's a problem. But it wasn't. It was not in the best of positions. So right now, like I said, we have the diagonal split. GBC has south. Recursion has north. I feel like Fred has a stronger position, though. A lot of it's dart, so it's probably just an illusion. I mean, compared to the amount of scalpel and scorchers that, that Recursion has, Recursion has a much, much stronger, straightforward attack force. Like, their force can actually do a lot of damage. Whereas, whereas GBC's force, or at least Fred's force, doesn't have a whole lot. The darts are handy. They're not, they are glass cannons, though. That's the thing. That, that glass part's going to be the biggest issue. 
They're basically, ha I've mentioned before, they're half daggers in terms of firepower. And they're actually, I think, daggers in terms of DPS. Not entirely sure. No, never mind, they are half. Daggers have 110 DPS, so they have 55. So two of them are the same as a dagger. And slightly cheaper. But that's spread across two units, and so the health is a problem. It is a massive problem. But now Recursion, wow, Recursion's actually not even got this. They've kind of got the north. They don't have a very strong position, even where they could safely have at the south. Like the way that GBZ has this set, like Fred has the entire setup right here, which is pretty strong. The, the equivalent setup is not in place for Recursion, so GBC is pulling quite ahead. Tanks or no tanks, this is still GBC's map, apparently. They still know what to do here. At the same time, though, Akadem is setting up that south side. They're getting that going. They want to have this. I mean, they need to have this. They, they have to have this economy. If they don't take it, the only other option is to try to break the south. And with these two stingers here, that's not going to happen until either an overwhelming force or rapiers. Or ravens, I suppose. But any, like, air units. Air units to do the trick or... Anything else? Oh yeah, right, attrition counters, I think. Sorry, Kluan's pointing out the attrition counter. I honestly don't like the aesthetics that much. The number, <clears throat> I mean, it's kind of nice to have. It works decently well. I'd kind of prefer it as a bit of a bar that kind of goes back and forth to whichever team has the advantage. Ideally. I don't know, it seems like the best way to present it as far as I'm concerned. Not going to put it on for this game. I might as well experiment with it in game three. I'd actually forgotten about it. But it looks like GBC is going to be provoking Game 3 to happen pretty soon. Google Frog will pull in to defend. Are, is there going to be a mix-up? Are they going to come in from the north? Are they going to flank around? Because that would be a really good idea. These Scorchers are enough to at least... I mean, they pulled back all the forces. If these Scalpels were to go around the other side, that would be great. Because they're out of position. And they are indeed pulling around because they realize the position has been compromised. But I think this is too little too late. Google Frog and Akronim can just move back and forth as necessary because it's not simultaneous. These scalpels coming in, which will die for very little gain. Okay, that was two Scorchers. Never mind, that was actually a fair amount of gain. That was pretty even. Inside of Google Frog's territory, though. You always gotta be wary about that one. Always have to be wary. No air switch, though. Interesting. I mean, they're like 40 metal total, 20 metal each. It would be a bad time for an air switch, but also, it might be worth it. Bearing in mind, scalpels, they have homing missiles, but they're so slow, most air units can actually run away from them. So scalpels aren't that good of an anti-air force. Which means, rapiers could be working against them, or phoenixes. No, not really phoenixes, there's too much health. 680 health would not burn through quickly. But rapiers work nicely, or black dawns. We saw those before. Clearly the players are willing to use them. Something we don't know. There's something we don't know about Black Dawns. They've gotten suddenly popular. And Aquanum can't easily push in here either. Neither side really has a solid enough army to be able to do much damage. Like everything everyone does is just... It either destroys their army or just, just causes them to fall back and it's becoming a bit of a stalemate. Although at this point, Aquanum managing to clear out Fred's forces, getting into Hokomoko's workers, Major Hokomoko can't take this. I mean, they Akunum still needs to take that south side. <clears throat> well, recursion in general. Hokomoko, their economic advantage, though, should be starting to pan out pretty soon. Getting the fusion plan, that's going to cause... What's it going to cause in terms of overdrive? I forgot to have this up the entire time. But yeah. That's out of the way for overdrive. They're going to have to build some pylons, which they likely will... Now, I would guess... Although, they don't really have made connected grids. Yeah, they're... Yeah, it's a grid of six, grid of six. They don't have a whole lot of gridding going on. Whereas here, they're... I mean... If they were to get enough energy, Recursion would have a much, much stronger setup for re for Overdrive. And now the Halberds coming in. Where are the Scalpels behind them? There are none. The Halberds are just coming in to try to get a good position before attacking. Which has just happened, but they're also right in the middle of a bunch of scalpels. And that went exactly as well as I thought it would. Although, they could have a couple scalpels, I think. But yeah, that, that didn't work out too well. I think they're mostly trying to provoke splash damage. And how about that? An eraser? You don't see that very often. A cloaked penetrator coming in. Really, you don't. 
they're very powerful units, but you do not see that very often. So I guess what they're trying to do is get close to the stinger. And then deal with that once they see it. Well, the penetrator's got a massive attack range. What can they see? That's what I want to know. Quite a lot, actually. They can see Fred's entire defensive line, for one thing. They know where the stinger is, though. Oh, that's a moot point. The stinger's no longer there. Apparently got destroyed or torn down. Yeah, Cloaked Ravager's coming in. Cloaked... Okay, no longer Cloaked Penetrator, but still, Cloaked Ravager's is a big deal. I'm a bit surprised there's... I guess the Shield Butt Switch would be required for Cloaked Roaches. Yeah, Cloaked Ravager's finally! I'm so glad we're seeing an Eraser. I've been... I've been meaning to t mention that, you know, Erasers are kind of a big deal. Like, kind of worth building. They do a lot of cool, powerful things to make it so that it's harder to understand what your opponent's up to. But they're also 600 metal, so that would make people reluctant to build them. It was hard to convince people, hey, you should build these when they're that expensive. For reference, I mean, 600 metal, that's like two Ravagers right there. I mean, are they worth two extra Ravagers? No, the answer is, yeah, probably. They actually are quite strong. And down goes Aquanum's Commander. There's nothing to be done again for that. The Aquanum's Commander just goes down, and the Burst doesn't even kill the Halberds. So the question is, can this Eraser really be that valuable? With Scalpels, I can say maybe, but, it's like, I don't know. It, like, what? Does it really change, at this point, what's known? I mean, it changes a little bit, because the radar is no longer as useful. They don't know exactly where the forces are. But still, it's not a lot of information that wasn't already available. However, we do have forces coming in from Google Frog. Oh, sorry. Forces reclaim for Google Frog. Reclaim for whenever Google Frog wants. Back on him has not been able to take that south side. This entire section has been open, which is where GBC's economic advantage has been coming in. Now, at this point, it looks like we're going to see what will probably be the final fight. Or at least, if, if Recursion can't make this work, it's going to be it. If they can make this work, though, it's going to be probably a turnaround. I mean, there's not much behind this front line of defenses. That's about it. There's a front line of defenses, there is an okay-sized army, but Google Frog's army is also quite... It's also quite large. Pretty formidable. Down goes Hokumoku's commander, weakening their economy, so evening that particular weakness out. And nice use of the scalpels. Just wait for them to cloak, get back in, get close enough to that stinger to deal with it. Or not. Deal with the halberds directly. That's another option. Yeah, those halberds are... Like I said, they must be provoking Splash. That's that's what they're doing. They want to make the scalpels hit each other. Because that is a big weakness of scalpels. Although, unfortunately, the penetrator is getting heavily threatened. I don't know if it's going to go down. There's a lot of damage on the line, but I think it is going to be protected. Just barely. Those halberds are desperate to get rid of that penetrator. But it is saved. Just barely, it is saved. However, <laughs> Fred coming in... This is... This... Oh, wow, another commander down. There goes Google Frogs. And I think this is it. I think GBC has taken it. They got rid of the Eraser. That was pretty much Recursion's trump card right now. The only way they could get rid of any Stingers at all was basically use that Eraser. Because they had to be cost effective. And now that's no longer happening. Although, if this goes around the other way, a handful of workers, if a few, if there are a few Quills or a few Masons right now... The reclaim would be amazing. The reclaim could help them stabilize completely. But they, they're under a huge amount of pressure now. I don't even th think they're going to be thinking about it. Ah, uh, it's not about Thunderbird. It's still... Oh, wait, can it build? No, it can't! Oh, that was bad for hitting the factory. That was really bad that it hit the factory. So, GBC takes game two. So moving on to game three. As I mentioned before, it's not tiebreaker, it's just... There are three games. But it will be a tiebreaker in this case, because, yeah, one and one. So what map are Recursion going to play on? What map would they rather play on? I almost feel like they're going to play on something like Flooded Valley or some silly map like that. Because Google Frog has a lot... I mean, Google Frog basically designs the game. And Aquanim... They're often used for... They often go for the gunship switch. I mean, Ravage I seem to do well on. Flooded Valley I'm fairly certain I've seen them do well on. And what other maps could they go for? I don't think Comet Catcher. I don't think Aquanim is going to be comfortable with Comet Catcher. 
I mean, they might go for something like Avalanche if they want to go for a quick win. That's kind of risky, though. GBC has been getting the early advantage in both games. I mean, the, the first game, there was a stabilization. Google Frog and Akuna managed to get in and stabilize and then just push them back slowly. This one, on the other hand, they never got that southeast. That southeast side is like kind of the big determinant. If Google Frog had managed to get that and hold that, or Akuna managed to get that and hold that, the game would have been much more even. But because that they didn't have that, after about eight minutes, it really was GBC's favor. Good. I'm glad they used the eraser, though. I'm not sure if it was the best eraser usage, but I'm glad they had it. There was a lot to deal with, though. Those halberds were set up basically to counter it directly. That was... That was quite successful in that regard. Those halberds did their job. So, where is... Okay, so the map has not been chosen yet. But that will be chosen pretty soon, I'm guessing. So wait for that, because that... That's important. I mean, what map recursion chooses... Because that's the thing about these tournaments. You choose The loser chooses the map, and the maps... The maps mean a lot. They mean a lot more than it might be clear at first. Where... Okay, so what's coming in here? We are going to Avalanche, indeed. They are going for the quicker map. They are going for the quicker, somewhat rush-oriented play. That is not entirely expected. I'm honestly, I I can sort of see why they would, because GBC did win in a fairly econ-heavy map. But still, that's... like Seriously? Although, Avalanche is deceptive. Avalanche is actually bigger than it looks. So don't go thinking, oh, well, it's Avalanche, it's just a rush-based map. This map, this map, despite being 8x8, it has diagonal star positions. But that's the important thing to remember. This map is actually... Oh, where did I go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, this map, more than it looks, has a lot of... I can't even find the attrition widget. Sorry, sorry, clone, I can't turn on the attrition widget. Or if I can, it's a different attrition widget. Sorry about that. Anyway, this map, like I said, corner starts. It's corner starts. It's So it's 8x8, eight eight, but it has that. It has a, quite a few defensible positions. So this game can actually last a little while. It could be fairly even. Like, it's not necessarily just a rush, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to see a rush coming in here. And Light Vehicle Shield, no, Google Frog, it looks like they're going for a bit more of a relatively usual pl wait. wait, 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 no, Convict first, that's, that's fine, that's normal, there's a lot of reclaim, so it's worth it, I was thinking maybe they're going to go for a Shielded Leveler Rush, like a Shielded Thug Leveler Rush, which I believe is a thing, I think Dancer made it, well, Hokomoko, once again in the, once again in the Hovercrafts, once again in the vehicles and Hovercrafts, so this south side is pretty open for Google Frog, the north side is well, sort of, but it's more so the south side, I mean, of course, vehicles can go down, but the difference is that bots can take this path. That hill is open to bots. Oh, they are going for Thug Leveler. Okay. Well, sort of open to bots. There are paths that bots can take up and down the hill. And Leveler, we have Leveler, we have Thug, we have Convict. Okay, so we are seeing a Thug Leveler ball, or something like it. That is exactly what I was figuring. Hmm. That's what I was figuring, but at this point, it doesn't look too promising. The level are not inside the Thug Shield Ball. That's weird. Should be. And that bandit, that wasn't, no, that wasn't taking the south. The bandit did check out the south. Didn't see much it liked. But yeah, that thug leveler gets set up. I mean, that leveler needs a bit of repair. That leveler needs a bit of repair. It doesn't auto-heal. 
Or at least not quickly enough. Might auto heal after a minute. Most units do as far as I were. Most units will auto heal after you give them about a minute or so out of combat. But levelers, if they do, it hasn't been a minute yet. So interesting mix coming in here. One, and just at this point, it's just counters to counters. Like rogue to outrange the scalpels, or at least match the range of the scalpels, because I don't believe they outrange the scalpels, but they actually no, they do. Yeah, five thirty to four fifty. So yes, rogues to outrange the scalpels and ravagers to outtank them. Nah, it's been over. Wait. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now it's auto healing. It's finally been a minute out of combat. The Google Frog now in a better position now they have that shield set up. But GBC once again taking that center very quickly. That's what GBC does every single game. They just rush that center. Akinem and Google Frog both trying to go over to the edges. Reclaiming what energy they can, getting the metal extractors off the edges of the map. I mean, like I said, Google Frog can actually go up and down. If they need to patrol up and down the map, they can do that. And that leveler once again getting out of the shield ball, moving a bit too fast. I'm a little surprised they aren't using control. I think it's control move. They hold control and right click, and that will cause... Also, why is it not being repaired? Oh, I guess Goofrog has very little energy. That explains it. But yeah, that, that leveler there. Control move would keep it under the shield ball. But there might be... A, I might be missing something with the turn rates. Because they might be doing that already. I'm sure they are aware of that. I'm sure they would do it. Like, there's no reason not to. So at this point, GBC is... GBC is actually not that economically strong despite their position, but they are in a pressuring position. This is a position, this is a rather oppressive position. Especially with all this, like those slashers are not fun to deal with. Shields can sort of deal with them, Wolverines can sort of deal with them, but still it's not fun. Dealing with them is very difficult. And the thug leveler setup... I mean, they were expecting a rush. They were expecting a strong rush. They were not expecting to see right out of the gate. This is out of the gate slashers. Slashers and scalpels, that's exactly out of the gate what these two were building. They never built a dagger, they never built a scorcher. Thug Leveler is really good in that case, but not in this one. But Thug's back up to full. I don't I don't think they're gonna try again yet. They might eventually, but I think the Thug's shields would be just they'd be destroyed, pretty much, by this. At this point, Akdam taking that south side very strongly. Gone idle though, but taking the south side. North side going to Fred. And the center just getting pressured and pressured and pressured. And GBC taking out recursion. This is really odd. I expected recursion to do a lot stronger. Especially after that first game. That first game was a really strong showing by Google Frog and Aquanum. But, I mean, at this point, the only thing I can think they're maybe doing is trying to bait them into a trap. Like trying to bait, bait Fred and Hokumogo out of their out of their safe reinforcement zone into a trap, trying to set them up. I mean, this, this stinger is basically that trap. But it's going to take oh, five seconds. It might be too much. We'll see. The thug and the leveler are... Are they dead? They're dead, aren't they? No, they're not. They're back here. They're still alive. The stinger is up, but it didn't quite work out as a trap. And those daggers... Coming around the coming around the south. Bit of a problem for that one metal extractor. Agnes commander having not been leveled up means they can't easily defend that area. And the north side as well. Like GBC is just taking everything. The only thing they haven't really taken is the metal extractors. They've taken a few of them, but not very many. And Stinger push coming in. This is not going to work. The Stinger's dead. Google Frog. What are they going to do? I mean, Goofrog and Akronim both, really. The are much more focused on Econ support. Which is actually going pretty strong, despite that the Dagger Rush... That actually kind of just took forces away from the center. And a risky move here. Goofrog making a bit of a gambit. They sacrificing their center position, or at least the center position for the time being, relying on the Stinger. They're basically relying on the Stinger and relying on the Wolverines to discourage anything coming in here. Well... I mean, Akronim's Wolverines, but still, they're relying on that. And hoping for the best that they can take out the North. And it looks like they actually will be able to. This looks good. This looks good for, for Recursion. They should be able to take out the North. They should be able to get rid of 
all that set up there, set up themselves, get a bit stronger in their economy. I mean, the south side is becoming acronyms too. The center, the center might start getting flanked pretty soon. If GBC isn't careful, they're, they're getting pretty close to a flank. But these daggers are going to be an issue. These daggers will get rid of the assault force. Probably counterattack too. This Lotus, four seconds, is that going to be in time? Yeah, it'll be in time. But the thug can't do much. The thug and the thug and the rogue are dead. Of course, the south side is the one that's much more lucrative. The north side's okay. I mean, losing that is a problem. You don't want to lose that if you don't have to. But this is almost a bait. Like, it got rid of the daggers. The south side still saves. The south side is the one that actually has all the metal in it. The north side has some metal, but not much. And the center is currently holding, so I think that we're going to see... I think we're going to see something pulling back. Because, <clears throat> I mean, at this point, Google Frog has the north side. Or at least they have their, their half in the north side. Akinem's their half of the south side. And it's pretty well defended, too. So it's not going to be a problem. Now, the center has fallen a little bit. The Penetrator is still a concern. Penetrators do not trigger claws, I believe. Because they are hovering. I don't, I'm pretty sure they don't actually trigger the mines. Not that they're the only target, but still. That is an issue. The Penetrator is going to be hard to deal with. Much harder than the Stingers. But with the North being pretty much taken, the South being... Well, half taken. Not entirely taken, but it does leave an opening... I mean, that's a big pass. There's one Lotus in the way, that's it. If Akinem, or rather Google Frog, were to go around south, they'd have no opposition, and they'd be able to take care of everything there. Now, what radar is there? Okay, they're a bit aware that that's been taken, or at least that there's something over to the south. They know there's something to the north, because they assaulted it. But what can they get rid of? Not to mention the wall, because why not? Make a wall for the Wolverines. A lot of terraforming this clan wars. A lot of terraforming th today. It's interesting. You don't see very much of that necessarily, and this is probably not going to work too well. Wow, is that? I think that was the impaler from Fred. Hang on. No, never mind. No, no, no. That was that was Akron. That wasn't a friendly fire incident. That stinger was supposed to die. Yeah, all the artillery coming in. If you can't win, if you, I mean, if you have to defend. Build artillery. That gets you out of there. It's a good safe zoning option. Just crack open this area. The north side's been taken once again. These halberds should be able to reclaim it, though. There's not much in the way of defenses. Like I said, the main thing that would be a concern would be... with the south side. But the south side's not even being attacked. Although I say that, and it looks like a force from Fred is about to attack the south side. That will be able to break through. Those, those ravagers are enough. But it's a question of, are they going to go to the south side, or are they going to go to the center again? Which is a bit of a futile effort. Or futile. A bit of a futile effort. Now at this point, recursion taking back the economy. I mean, harassing the center out, that's the biggest thing. Because that's entirely where GBC has been set up. The north side, however, is going to be a massive weak point. Those halberds coming in, those halberds are going to be able to take care of nothing. They're actually going to go straight into the main base, because that's what you do. Or are they gonna try at least? Dirtbag's gonna stop him. Dirtbags are not gonna let that happen easily. Or gonna try okay. Ineffectually going to wave their heads at them. They're gonna headbang at them. And there are the Ravagers. And those Ravagers are probably gonna be able to take care of Yeah, that Stardust is down. Not much else is in the way to defend. And nothing can there's no bandits or anything to come down the hill to save this. So at this point, GBC is coming in for a very strong showing. But they can't easily get through the center. That's the one problem. The south side, however, is very weak. South side's open. Akram is able to escape with their commander in time, though. The Ravagers can't get through. But that south side's been broken. Akram's going to have to do a lot of rebuilding there. At the same time, though, the center's been broken. I mean, GBC has hardly any metal right now. They have a handful of extractors plus their commanders. And no more penetrators. What the heck? That was a weird place for that Firewalker to attack. Good choice, though. You do want to see that, because at this point, I mean, that was a jump bot. Firewalker assist call. Actually, it looks like a possible switch entirely. The Hovercraft not, factory is not being used for anything. It's just pure Firewalker. And now to stop the Ravagers. But still, that was a massive economic blow. 
Mind you, the, the military advantage was already in Google Frog Macronim's favor. So it might be okay. This is an interesting strategy, I think. The dirtbag scouting for the Impaler. I mean, a lot of people have been complaining about the Impaler not being useful. And while this is more of a team game strategy, having the dirtbag scout for them, it's not a bad strategy. I mean, even just, you know, when you get the Impaler, that's fairly late in the game. You can get another factory for a dirtbag assist. If you're trying to get a dirtbag assist, that is going to be... A that's going to be handy. And it looks like GBC is... Well, the factory's taking a lot of damage. I mean, another couple missiles from the Impaler should be able to finish it. Yeah, because this is the Impaler's range. Like, that is a massive range. I think it's like a thousand something. That's not you. You. 1,500 Elmos. Yeah, that's... That is a huge range. So that's something to point out. Dirtbags are great artillery spotters. Awesome artillery spotters, and I think that's actually going to win the game. Those dirt bags. Not just for Orphelius anymore. Although, admittedly, I do think it's very funny when you see like two dozen dirt bags come in and just slam a base down and win that way. That is a pretty cool way to win. Or at least a cool way to watch someone win. But not just for that, they're also for artillery spotting. Actually, I suppose their original purpose was to block off vehicle factories by building a giant hill. Not just for that anymore, either. Actually, I haven't seen that happen in a while. I like the fact that dirtbags have much more straightforward, less... I mean, the cheesy uses are good. I don't dislike the cheesy uses. But it's good that on top of that, they have non-cheesy uses. And I think this is going to be the final fight. This is going to be it. I mean, Hokumoko and Fred have a Firewalker and a few scalpels and some slashers, and the slashers are out of position. Firewalker's going to get destroyed pretty quick. The bandits will take that out. The dirtbags are not being targeted. It looks like... Is that manual micro or... Ouch! Really bad timing. The Firewalker kills itself along with the friendly scalpel. Though that did... That did present an obstacle for the bandits. That does stop them. That does actually force Google Frog back because of that fire. So I'll give it that. That fire actually did a good job. At least it bought some time. Unfortunately, the amount of pressure they're under... I mean, given... I remember, 10 minutes ago... Ten minutes ago, Recursion was under even more pressure, and they bounced back to this, thanks to that stinger. Well, this stinger over here. And clever use of artillery, they managed to bounce back to the point that they could take the game. Now, are GBC going to build their own stinger? That's the question. What are they going to do? Nice overdrive, too. Oh, yeah. Almost double overdrive. Yeah, are they going to build their own stinger? Are they going to try to set up defenses to, build, to bounce back from this? It's much later in the game, though. And the army sizes are larger. That's a bit of a problem. No, they're in fact going for a counterattack. The Ravager's going along the north side, trying to hit the main base directly in a counterattack. And Go Recursion's not prepared for this. They do have a rapier, and that's not enough. And the south side, Akron has not rebuilt that yet. Google Frog over will be. And Hokomoko, Hokomoko willing to resign. Fred wants to try this first. They're going to go for this counterattack. They have 10 Ravagers. Those Ravagers are going to be doing their thing. And Dirtpag's nice wall off. Not quite in time, sadly. Good plan, though. Right thing to do, not quite the right timing. But still, I did slow their averages down a bit. It forced them into a small ball, but yeah, this is... I think after this, we're going to see Fred throw it in. Like, Hokomoko probably realizes there's not that much they can do. The ra 10 Ravagers got blocked off. They got spotted. Still doing a decent amount of damage, though. Getting rid of caretakers here and there, but this point in the stage of the game, not enough. And that's game! So, Recursion takes it 2-1. GBZ has opposition. Opposition that is able to bounce back from an early rush, too, which is what GBZ seems to be strong at, is setting up early. But no, Google Frog and Akinem, twice, they've bounced back from a position of early disadvantage. This one, an extreme disadvantage. I thought they were dead. Yeah, that stinger. That stinger. So that is Clan Wars for August 8th. I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing the tournament matches later today, the ones that I was talking about, Clone and Google Frog, that I was talking about on Wednesday. I don't know. I... I kind of don't want to flood YouTube with too many videos. That's always my concern. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for now, at least. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the Clan Wars. Good job to Google Frog and Aquadim for representing a new clan. 
And that's going to be it for me tonight. So have a, or at least like for now. So have a good day.